He switched around a few positions. He was at the same position where I'm at now when we first came in, and then he switched over to the wheel, and he's been working in both, actually, uh, still to this day, and he's knowledgeable of both, and we can expect that he's going to give 100% full effort. He's going to know what he's doing on the field, and he's going to play, play his heart out. And that's what all of us guys in the linebacker core, that's what we um, always – or tell ourselves like no matter if we don't know to play or don't know like a specific responsibility based off of formation just play hard uh go 100 miles per hour and and just do what we gotta do i mean we're we're athletes we just gotta take what's given to us and, and work with it bob flounders hey brandon good to talk with you um it seems, Brandon, like every time Penn State puts an updated roster out, you you get bigger. Um, I think Brent Price said a couple days ago that you're close to 245 or 250 now. Is that is that accurate? And also, he also said Lance Dixon's the fastest guy in the linebacker room, and I'm sure that's true. But how how fast are you at that weight? What's your 40 time looking like these days? So recently, well, actually today, I weighed in at like 244. 245. I had a look this morning and I'm moving very well with the weight. I feel powerful, strong, agile, all whole bunch of adjectives you can use. Um, Lance, he's definitely um, faster than me because like his DB background as well as him weighing a little bit less, but I feel like I'm still able to do what I need to do at an exceptional rate. Audrey Snyder. Brandon, totally different vein here, but um, the NCAA is allowing players to put social messaging on their jerseys this season if they want to. Uh, Coach Franklin said the leadership council is going to talk about that, but if you could put one message on your jersey this year, um, what would you want that to be and why? For me, I can't really like stick to one specific message because there's multiple different messages that I stand by and not not only like you will see the typical like Black Lives Matter on people's um, jerseys, but also you'll say you got to be staying divided, we fall and stuff like that. I mean, like for me as an African-American man, like I definitely feel where people say all lives matter because everybody does matter. Everybody like just just how your life matters, my life matters. Uh so uh, Mr. Tyler's life matters. Like every, everybody's life matters. But for me, when I see Black Lives Matter, I see what's going on in, in the public, what's getting posted on social media and how like brutality, uh, different racial acts going on in the, in the world. And for me to even, where I'm from, from where I live and back in Virginia, for me to even walk outside and even feel safe and go downtown to the store or whatever, that takes a lot. It take it takes a lot, and to have a nice car and stuff like that, that really makes you feel even more of a target. Not because of the color of my skin, but what I have while I'm black. So I mean, there's there's a lot of different things that people are able to put on back of their jersey and have great meaning to it. So I can't really decipher off of one specific thing. That's just me personally. Appreciate it, Brendan. Hey, Bangieri. Hi, Brendan. Hope you're doing well. So this um this past offseason, you guys lost three starters in the linebacker room, Jan Johnson, Cam Brown, and Micah. What are some of the things you learned from those guys, and how confident that you and the rest of the guys will play up to that level that they played at last year? I would definitely feel like we, we're going to miss those guys as far as them knowing what they're doing on the field and knowing the um, playbook and just having – a great amount of experience, but for us uh, stepping up into the roles, like everybody's stepping up, I'm stepping up in, in Cam's spot, Jesse's stepping up in Mike's spot, and Ellis is stepping up in Jan's spot. We we all have not really the same type of game, but we bring different flavors to the table. You know what I'm saying? Like I know Jan, he was like strict. He's like he was going to do exactly what the play is counted for, and he's going to do it well. Uh, Cam, with his length and everything, that he gets the pass lanes. And also, I kind of contribute that 
too because of basic basically our like body type or whatever but i feel like we all and jesse he's more of a uh, bruiser where mikey he will run past you and and basically just get to the play like that for me i feel like we all give the same value but we just bring a different type of flavor to the game you know what i'm saying so i mean i'm not really concerned about us and our abilities and i have full confidence in us as a unit Hayes. Hey, Brandon, it's a uh, true freshman. You played in 13 games last year. Um, I wanted to ask you a, kind of a two-part question. First part is, you know, what do you think the biggest adjustment for you was last year during that 13 games period? And then second part of that question, in which ways do you feel you're better equipped this season than you were last season? In which ways do you feel you developed um, the most? Okay, so for the first part of that question, for me, the biggest adjustment was not only the playbook, but also, well, I wouldn't even really say the speed of the game because different people have different tempos during the game, depending on the situation. But for me, I would have to say the size of the players in the, in the playbook. Like high school, for me, shoot, a offense alignment was like 5'8", maybe like 180 pounds soaking wet. So, I mean, from that to – Six 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 seven three twenty five. Being able to move laterally just as well as I can, that's that's a, that's a big difference. <laughs> that's a big difference. So it was just the size of the players and just being able to understand during the with all the distractions, fans, uh, different stuff going on in the field, and just being able to lock in the responsibility. That's basically the biggest difference for me. And towards the end of the season, I would felt more confident in my abilities to be able to handle all that. But at the beginning of the season, I kind of struggled with that because obviously true freshman being in situation and it was just something new. Ms. Garcella. Brandon, I'm going to ask you two very different questions. First, uh, there, there was a linebacker a few years ago by the same name who played at Penn State, Brandon Smith. Have you ever met him? Have people ever, just on social, whatever, social media in a classroom, have they ever gotten you, gotten your names confused or whatever? Secondly, uh, the Idaho game last year, what did you like better, your hit or CJ's reaction? Okay, so for um, – the Brandon Smith thing, uh, there's been definitely people that got us mixed up with, like, tagging us on Instagram. And just – I remember he made a play in one of the Bulls. I forgot it was. Um, <clears throat> he made an uh, interception, and I got tagged for it. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, like, I didn't really get a whole lot of plays, but I know good and well I remember an interception. I knew that it wasn't me. I was like, oh, okay, it's the other Brandon Smith. And then Coach Pride, we always make jokes about it. And um, I haven't actually met him, but I just know that we've gotten, like, um, coaches got mixed up with uh, calling us, like, they'll call, they'll try to call him about something for me or vice versa like that. So that's the kind of the confusing thing like that. And um, what, was your, what was your other question? Hey. You're talking on mute. What did you like better from the Idaho game last year? Your hit near the end of the game or CJ reaction to it? The reaction was by far the the funny part of, about the whole play. I didn't even know that he did that on the sideline until like I started like watching the play over and over again, and people were like commenting like, "Which was just better, the hit or the reaction?" I'm like, "What reaction?" I like I'm looking on the sideline and I seen like. When we have like our uh, pregame hype videos or whatever, I've seen like other people's reactions and like people mouth wide open looking like this, old towels like that. But I never really seen him fall to his knees like that until I caught it like, I want to say like a week later or something like that. It was like, I just wasn't paying attention to it. But that's definitely the funny part of that whole sequence that happened. Josh Meyer. Hey, Brandon. Uh, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about your teammate, Jesse Lucetta. Uh, I'm just curious if, if there's a specific play in, in practice or in a game 
uh, from him that especially sticks out to you, uh, that kind of showcases his athletic ability? And, and if not, you know, how would you describe him maybe, uh, you know, as a linebacker? What does he kind of bring to the table? For him, as a linebacker, he's very knowledgeable about what he has to do, and he's going to do it to the best of his ability, and he's obviously a very strong linebacker. He's able to move uh, quickly laterally. He's explosive, and he's able to um, get out of situations that not only me, but even a few other linebackers may not be able to get out of when dealing with multiple linemen. Like He's he's very strategic about about the way he uses his hands and being able to decipher off the blocks. And there, I wouldn't really say there's a specific play that that is, like, pointed out that he really succeeds at because he's able to move a certain way to um, to even free me up sometimes it may, if I may go on a blitz or something like that. So, I mean, there's a lot of different things that, that – really going to affect when you're talking about a single play and a favorite play, to be honest. Evan Patrick? Hey, Brandon. So last season at the linebacker position, you guys had so much depth with the group of you, Alice and Jesse, being behind that starting group and being able to kind of alternate possessions in a lot of games. Um, do you see that being the case this year? And what are the benefits of having, like, two solid three groups or groups of three guys at the linebacker position so for us i mean we um we have we well let me think about this for us we definitely have young guys that have come in we have uh tyler elson he come in uh Zariah fisher and uh curtis jacobs they're gonna be coming in and they're gonna get thrown into the fire real quick just like i was in uh lance as a freshman, they're, they're going to get thrown in as well. Uh, some may be longer, some may be shorter. We just don't know right now. That's That all depends on them and their, how they want to work. For me, it's just uh, my job to make sure that whoever's behind me, whether it's Curtis or Soraya, I know Tyler, he's in the middle. I know Ellis will uh, take care of him. I just know that it's my job to make sure that they're up to date and they get all the help that they need. Because for me, being in that position, it was difficult. <laughs> it was difficult. And just to be able to know more, I just have to be that type of person that just shelters them and helps them out with it to make sure they know what they're doing at all times. Tyler Donahue. Brendan, uh, a lot of names in this uh, room came with a lot of recruitment being clout but Charlie Catcher is like the one exception there obviously got an offer to Penn State but not as widespread of a recruitment as a lot of you guys are are we not talking enough about Charlie and and the impact he could have in in 2020 and and what does he mean to the room being one of the few guys who's been around longer than two years Charlie is definitely somebody that is that is slept on he's able to make plays like he did in a, a few games this year as well and for him he knows all three linebacker positions. So that's something that he definitely holds and he's definitely valued in that way. Like say, like if I was to go down with the injury or say somebody in the middle linebacker position, the middle position, he's able to play all three of those and know exactly what he's doing. So he's very knowledgeable. He knows exactly what he needs to do, where he needs to be. And he's definitely somebody that's left on. Josh Meyer. Brandon, uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, uh, you mentioned, you guys have been asked a lot about Micah Parsons. I'm just curious, do you guys clown on each other at all about Michael? Like, uh, you know, if Jesse misses a tackle, is it like, hey, you know, Michael would have made that, or do you guys not touch that at all? I'm I'm just kind of curious why or why not, you know, how, how big of a, a factor that might be. We don't really clown each other to that standpoint. I mean, we do when it comes to interceptions and who has the best hands in the group. But uh, as far as, like, the whole tackle situation, anything that comes near us, we're expected to make, whether or not it's Mike, whether it's Jesse, whether it's Ellis, whether it's me, like, that's whoever, we're expected to make that tackle we are based off of what we've been taught and basically just how we've been able to maneuver through different things. Like, if there's a situation where we're definitely getting held or something like that, okay, you got to do this to get out of that type of situation. 
therefore this is how you make that play. So there's a lot of different factors when it comes into that, but anything that we're within range to, we got to make.